Welcome back to my channel and today we will gonna talk about writing an introduction for your research paper. Introduction is the first thing that your reader is going to see. So you need to make sure that it is clearly presented in concise but meaningful manner. There are five important aspects in writing introduction in IMRED format. It gives overview, state identified gap, present practical or theoretical problem, specify research problem, and thesis statement. Introduction is the first part of the paper. In IMRED format, it is written in a specific way. And to write a good research introduction, you have to stretch your imagination to create composite ideas related to your selected topic. There are necessary steps to do in making the introductory part of your research paper appealing. It includes searching updated references for gathering relevant information, reading books, having intellectual discussion or consultation with professionals, and of course, reviewing previous research works. When you combine your search information with your schemata, there is a sprout of brilliant ideas that will eventually come out in your mind. And you could say that you are finally ready to start a new journey in your research venture. Of course, you have to write a catchy opening sentence. Introduce your topic in a clear deductive sense. Cite the available related literature. And you have to tell what is new to your study as compared to the other studies. And of course, you have to state your research hypothesis. Always remember, in discovering what to write about, let your ideas flow into actual writing. Make a draft. You may find yourself exciting while correcting, adjusting, and editing your paper. But always remember that polishing your work will bring you into new dimension of writing experience. Classroom-based action researches focus on the single issue identified by individual teacher or collaborative effort of the group of teachers who encountered the same issue in the classroom. But in any way, you have to write good research introduction based on depth and critical analysis of the identified single problem in the classroom. Now, let me present to you the guidelines in writing introduction or context and rationale in action research. Presenting the first part of the study in a striking and comprehensive manner is important to get the attention of the readers. Context and rationale or introduction must be written in paragraphs. It begins with the overview of the study, which describes the single identified major problem in a broader scope that will lead to the motivation and intention of the researcher in conducting the study. It showcases researchers' vocabulary in simple and appropriate words, persuasive and directional. It is always written in present tense, provides factual data, and necessary background information that will support the ideas of the researcher and will give clear perspectives to the presented topic. It has power to enlighten and shape readers' ideas. And to write the introductory part of the study, the following can be considered. First, you have to provide perspective on the identified major problem of the study. Meaning to say, when you try to think about the reasons of applying solution to the identified specific major problem in the classroom, you are projecting already the possibilities of achieving your main objective. This is where your horizon starts. Holistic perspective is the general viewpoint why most researchers wanted to pursue the study. 
teaching philosophy will be applied where set of related body of knowledge that influence classroom practices, researchers' personality and set of values are dominantly manifested. Remember, this is the first paragraph of your context and rationale or introduction, therefore, must be inviting to the taste of the readers. Next, you have to provide theoretical background of the study that will support your principles. In action research or in any study, the theoretical foundation, foundations of the study are also included in the introductory part. The researcher integrates the theories best suited to the variables to support the line of arguments of the study in a clear and logical manner. It is a researcher's theoretical perspectives relative to the main objective or variables of the study. Third, you have to provide the current situations of your learners in the classroom that motivates you to conduct the study. As inquisitive teacher or researcher, difficult to simple analysis of the current situations in the classroom happens through gap analysis. You may review my previous posted video in this channel. And in this part, the researcher will describe all the circumstances that hinders the mastery of the learning objectives, the reasons behind the motivation, self-esteem, or whatever the dependent variable of the researcher. There is a dire need of giving immediate solution to the identified major problem that, of course, you have, you have to emphasize comprehensively. Then, you have to identify the possible solution to that problem. And to address the identified major problem in the classroom, the teacher or group of teachers who are researchers must transform themselves into a community of learners in the school. Collaborative discussion with the school head and other teachers is an act of reflective inquiry where the immediate solution to the problem will be identified specifically. The researcher will present the principles underlying to the context of independent variable, which is the solution itself. The complete descriptions of how the identified major problem be answered and solved along the process of the study. Next, you have to present related literature that will support and rationalize your given solution. The framework of previous scientific work or past studies and your present undertakings must be connected to each other. It should provide clear justifications to the variables, hypothesis, and the method. And in citing related literature, past tense of the sentence is always used. And of course, you have to include the main goal or objective of your study. In the latter part of your introductory part, I mean, in the latter part of your introduction, okay, the main objective of the researcher may be presented in simple and concise form. So, I think that is the end of our session today. And I hope that you learned something from this simple discussion. So, thank you for your listening and happy writing, everyone.